Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mac Whisperer Academy. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer. And in today's session, we're gonna continue our conversation all about different cloud storage solutions. But today, we're gonna to focus on Dropbox. Dropbox is my favorite cloud storage solution because it makes it easy for me to save space on my hard drive, share large files and documents with people, collaborate with people from all over the world, and organize my stuff easily and simply. And we're going to talk about all of it as soon as we get ourselves started. I'll see you there. Dropbox really gained popularity right in the early days of the iPhone. The iPhone didn't have an internal storage capability. There wasn't iCloud at that time. There wasn't easy ways to transfer documents from your computer to your phone. So Dropbox showed up and they made it easy. The first thing to know about Dropbox is don't think about it as a website. Don't think about it as this complicated cloud storage solution. I want you to think about Dropbox as a folder on your computer that happens to talk to the internet. That's it, just a folder, just like every other folder you've got. You put things into it, you take things out of it, you organize stuff in the folder, except this folder has a really cool magic trick. Because of its connection through the internet, it's able to synchronize that folder between any device you want. It's really easy to do, but the first place people go wrong is they use the web page. I almost never go on the Dropbox webpage. So let's first understand how to get logged in and set up properly with Dropbox. To get us started, we've got to go to the Dropbox website to download the application properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Safari down on my dock right here. I'm going to go to the Dropbox website, dropbox.com. Don't get fooled on this first page. You don't need the business level of Dropbox. Let's click where it says get Dropbox basic right here. Right from here, you have the option to sign up for a free account. A free account will give you two gigabytes of storage space, which is enough to get you started in this conversation. But if you're gonna use Dropbox to its fullest, you're probably gonna to need to pay for an account. Don't make the mistake of getting a business account unless you're a company with many, many, many employees. Most people are fine on the Dropbox Plus account, which costs $11.99 per month, or you can get it for a whole year for $120. Go ahead and click sign up for free if you need to. In my case, I'm going to sign in because I've already got an account. Once you get yourself set up with an account and logged in, your home page should look a little something like this. What we're going to do is we're going to download the app right from here. So to do that, click on your profile icon in the upper right corner and choose install Dropbox app. You can get to your download by clicking on the download icon in the upper left hand corner and double clicking to open up the installer. Here's our installer. Let's double click it to get it started. Go ahead and click open on the following screen if you see it. It'll take a moment for it to download and install the Dropbox application. Just let it do its thing for a moment. You should be greeted with a sign-in page like this. Go ahead and use your sign-in that you created for your free account. On the next following screens, just click the next button. The preset settings are pretty good. We'll tweak them in a moment. It may also ask you to turn on accessibility. If it does, click turn on accessibility. That'll open up your system preferences. You're gonna click the padlock in the lower left-hand corner and put in your password, and just check the checkbox to the left of Dropbox. Then you can close system preferences out. Here it's gonna give you a little information about Dropbox. I'm just gonna click next to go through this because I know these separate steps. I don't like using their backup system, so I'm gonna uncheck these here and click not now, and then continue on to Dropbox first thing I want you to notice is up at the top of your menu bar, you've got a new icon. That's the Dropbox icon. Let's click on it and see what some of our options are. First off, you may notice that it's got little arrows. That's because it's in the process of synchronizing. Down here it says, you can free up your hard drive space. I'm going to dismiss this because we'll change this setting ourselves in a second. Now, click on your profile in the upper right hand corner and go directly to preferences. A couple of things I want to make sure we change. The first thing is, under General, make sure it's set to Start on Startup. And down at the bottom, if it says Open Folders in Dropbox Desktop App, I want you to turn that off. I like to use the Finder. It's a little more efficient. 
As you move through it, let's just go step by step through the preferences. Under accounts, make sure it's set up properly. Under backups, make sure everything's turned off, especially camera uploads. That can cause all sorts of duplications and it's just not necessary for Apple users. You can skip over the network tab. There's really nothing to change there. Under notifications, if you want to be alerted when people make changes to your Dropbox account, you can leave these checked. I personally don't want to be bugged by it, so I'm going to turn all of these off. And then I'm going to go over to the sync panel. Here you're going to see an option that says save hard drive space automatically and I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. This means if there are files that I'm using in Dropbox that I have not accessed in a long period of time, Dropbox will send them up to the cloud to automatically save storage space on my computer. For a lot of people, you don't know which files you do or don't go into, so this is a great setting to save space because there may be a ton of things that you haven't accessed in years. That's it for preferences. Now let's do one other thing. As we click on the Dropbox icon, I want you to notice a couple of icons at the top. First of all, you've got this little globe icon. Clicking that globe icon will automatically open you directly onto the Dropbox website where you can do anything you need to do from your account. As I said earlier, I don't use the Dropbox website very often, but occasionally I need to go up there. That's the fastest way to get there. I don't even need to have a bookmark on Safari to do it. The other thing to be aware of is when you click on Dropbox, there's a little icon of a folder. This will automatically open up your Dropbox folder, which has been pre-installed for you inside of your computer's home folder. Let's go ahead and click on it. You're going to notice on the sidebar to the left of your finder that Dropbox shows up right at the top now. From this point on, you can add anything that you want to Dropbox simply by grabbing it like this document on my desktop and dragging it right in. You'll notice the little blue arrows on the right side of most of these documents. That's the Dropbox icon showing that it's in the process of synchronizing with the cloud. Once it's done, like the document we just put in there, you'll see a green check. When everything has a green check, your Dropbox folder is completely synchronized with the cloud and you're ready to get going. Let's talk about sharing from Dropbox. There are two different ways that you're going to share from Dropbox. The first one is what I call a one-time, one-way share. Let's say you've got a file with all of these pictures in it that you want to send to somebody. I'm going to come over here into my personal folder and here are my pictures and let's say I want to send all of these Dylan pictures to somebody who's doing a website for me. I don't need them to add their own pictures. I don't need them to have new pictures after I've added them. These are the pictures that I want to send them. This is very useful when you have large attachments, documents, or folders that you need to share with somebody that are too big to email to them. It's very, very easy to send them a link to this folder. All you have to do is right click on the folder itself and you'll see a little options section down here with the Dropbox icons. One of the options says, copy Dropbox link. This will copy a specific Dropbox link for this document or folder. Let's click on it. Then all I have to do is open up email or text or whatever you're using, create a new message, send it to whoever you need to send it to, and paste in that Dropbox link. Anyone who clicks on that link will be brought straight to that document or folder and given an option to add it to their Dropbox if they have a Dropbox account or download it to their computer. They don't need to have Dropbox when you send this, but there's a different kind of share, and this is a collaborative share. Let's say that you and your partner are working on a project, and that project has all sorts of documents in it, all sorts of photos in it, all sorts of things that the two of you are both going to be working on, or maybe there's three of you, or five of you, or 30 of you, it doesn't really matter. What you're going to want to do, rather than sending them a link to a folder or a link to a document, which will allow them to download something that doesn't stay connected to your files in your Dropbox is you're going to want to share a folder with them. For this function, they're going to need Dropbox. Your folder becomes their folder and anything you put in it, they see. And anything they put in it, you see. And you can work and collaborate in real time with it. It's very, very easy to do. All you have to do is come over to the folder that you want. I'm going to use this Zoom Backdrops as an example right click on it and select where it says share. This is going to open up another dialog box asking you who you want to share it with. 
Go ahead and put the email of anybody that you want to collaborate on this folder with into the box. You can add a little message letting them know what you're sending them or why you're sending it. And then you click the share button. And once you've shared that folder, you're going to notice that the icon for the folder actually changes. Let's take a closer look at that. You can see it right here. It's got an icon of three people on the folder itself. That means that folder is a shared folder and anything that the other person adds will show up in your folder and anything that you add will show up in their folder. This is a way to make sure everybody's on the same page of a project at the same time. One of the other functions of Dropbox that I really like is the ability to easily and simply determine what lives on your computer and synchronizes to the cloud and what lives in the cloud and shows up on your computer. What's the difference you ask? Well, the things that are saved on your computer take up storage space on your hard drive and the things that are saved in the cloud don't. So if you've got a folder with a lot of photographs or a lot of big heavy files and you don't have the storage space for it, it's very easy to simply right click on that folder and go to where it says Smart Sync and choose Online Only. If you look at the folders I've got, you'll notice that most of them have a little gray cloud icon to the right showing that they are in the cloud. It doesn't matter that they're in the cloud. I can still open them up and access them here just as easily as I could if they were local, except it saves a whole lot of space and prevents me from needing a really large hard drive to organize all of my stuff. I usually keep a lot of my stuff in the cloud and the things that I'm working on right now local, but it's very, very easy for me to right click on anything and send it right back up to the cloud and save myself a little bit of space. This brings me to the last thing I wanna to talk to you about with regard to Dropbox. Whether you use Dropbox or Google Drive or iCloud Drive or some other cloud storage solution, the best thing you can do for your organization is to start to simplify how many folders you keep in the beginning of the file structure. You'll notice here for me, there's a few loose items and about 10 or 12 folders. Those 10 or 12 folders organize everything I need into very, very simple categories. So if you're one of those people that has 60, 70 folders in their Dropbox or on their desktop or in their Google Drive, it's time for you to look at ways to consolidate and collapse those folders into each other. I call it my five folder fix. And the purpose of my five folder fix is to pick five basic categories that all of your documents can fall into. Categories like business, personal, home, family, finances, travel, etc. By creating these generic categories and using subfolders for more specific categories inside of those five folders, you'll find it much easier to find anything. If you're one of those people who has some folders in Dropbox and some folders in Google Drive and some on your desktop, you're gonna find yourself missing stuff, confused, and finding it very, very hard to get organized and you're gonna have a huge amount of duplication. The way I solved that was everything goes into Dropbox and then everything is everywhere. So that's our conversation about Dropbox. We talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about using Dropbox through the app and the finder on your computer rather than going up to the web page. We talked about how to download and set yourself up with your Dropbox account and some of the preferences that are important for you to use. We talked about two different kinds of sharing, a one-time share when you just need to send files to somebody and it's not a collaboration, and a long-term collaborative share when you and other people are working together on the same project. And we talked about how to use SmartSync to save storage space on your computer by sending the large files you're not using regularly up to the cloud and keeping only the current files or things you need immediately on your computer itself. That's all you need to know about Dropbox. Did I miss anything or leave anything out? If you've got any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments section down below. If you got some value out of this lesson, give it a thumbs up so that other people can easily find it. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little notify bell so that you're always notified when we put out our new videos. I'm Dylan Stewart. I'm the Mac Whisperer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.